see this question come up quite a bit in chief architect forums etc how do we do this cabinet right here what is this cabinet right here well let me select this cabinet real quick and then in my edit toolbar i'm going to open cabinet doors and you're going to see look at that it looks very similar to a pocket door cabinet and how does that work Turns out you can actually do this within Chief. There's a few caveats though about this and that just kind of comes with the territory of really custom cabinet symbols. But you can do this without doing any kind of layer manipulation or anything like this so that you can show this to a client on the fly. Keep in mind that we have to build out custom doors for our particular cabinet. It's not going to be a uniformly working situation because it depends on the depth of the cabinet itself. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into this and how do we do this? I'm gonna throw in a cabinet door here. Let's open this bad boy up. I'm gonna get into box construction and I'm gonna set my overlay to inch and a quarter. This is just gonna make a few things easier down the line for me. I'm also gonna to get to door drawer and note that I have to set door handle to none. That's really important. This isn't gonna work with a door handle, but we have a workaround for that, which we'll get to. Because we're making custom doors anyways, we're going to end up making a custom door with a door handle. But that doesn't need to scare you away from this video. It can be pretty quick and easy. Now let me get the front sides back. I'm going to get to the back side and I'm going to choose first match front. Okay. From there, I want to go down to custom face. So first, that initialized matching the front face of the cabinet. So if we switch around to the back, you can see here that matches the front. And now we have a custom face. We're going to do a couple things. We need to space this door out from its sides. So let's split this vertically and then split one of these doors up vertically again. And then first we're going to set this to be an opening and we're going to set this to be like a quarter of an inch. And then we'll choose that other door, which was on the other side and choose opening and set that to be a quarter inch. Now, when we key in some number, it's gonna automatically choose lock for model resize, which is what we want, all right? Now, the next thing is we can get rid of these separations. These are just automatically generated when we split this up. So we get rid of separation one, get rid of separation two, and we're left with separation, horizontal, separation, vertical, and then I have a blank area in my default cabinet boxes. And then in this layout horizontal, we've got an opening of quarter inch, the door, and then another opening of a quarter inch. If you haven't guessed by now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a door with an offset in its Y position so that it displays on the front side of the cabinet. What this also means is that this cabinet is not going to have a cabinet back. There are some workarounds with this, one being a lot more advanced, one being way easier, but less dynamic. We're gonna go with the less dynamic, easier method, which is just putting a backsplash behind the cabinet itself, if we need to display a back of this cabinet. Now let me switch back to the front of this cabinet, and we also need to set this up as well. So I'm gonna rotate my cabinet around so we can see the front, and then I've got a door right. We're gonna do the same thing, basically. We're gonna split this door once, choose one of those doors we split, split it again, and now we're going to set this to be an opening and we're also going to say that this has no shelves so we need to click on the shelves button click manual type in zero and now we've got an opening with no shelves and i'm going to make this opening maybe about one inch this will create opening separation which we can leave in this case and then door right and then separation another door right which we are you guessed it going to set this to an opening with no shelves Now I'm going to go ahead and set this to one inch again. So here we go. We've got an opening separation door, separation opening. That middle door, we're going to actually turn into an opening. And you can specify whatever shelves you like here. But this is it. We've finalized our approach here. So let me press OK. And let's take a look at what we've got. There we go. We've got the basic pocket assembly. Now is next is to build that door with an offset. So I have a door placed here already, and you're going to see here that I actually placed a little cabinet handle on the back side. So I get to select these two and in my edit toolbar, convert selected to symbol. OK, we're going to make sure that this is a cabinet door drawer, add to library, show advanced options. Now, when we look at this in the next 16, our door handle is facing in the negative Y leg. We need to rotate this around. So we're going to hit rotate a couple times in the Z so that that door handle is facing the positive Y direction. Okay. 
The next part about this is I want to set this door up because it has frame styles and rails. I want to set this up that, so that this uniformly stretches while avoiding stretching the styles and rails. So I need to know the size of my style and rail. For this particular symbol, I know it's two and five eighths. So I get to just come in here into width and say, hey, let me grab the overall width, which is 14 inches. I can divide this by two, leaves me with seven. And I'm going to minus the size of my rail in this case. So two and space five eighths, right? That's going to leave me four and three eighths. I can copy this into the other width input and just put a negative sign in front of it. And then I want to make sure that I'm choosing to uniformly stretch in between those planes. And you can see here, it's creating a stretch zone, which is showing that when this symbol is stretching, it's only stretching this zone, leaving my two styles in this case intact. All right. Same thing with the height. I'm going to go ahead and punch in this two and five eighths in this case. And then uh, for the overall height, I need to take my overall height of the symbol, 21 and a quarter, paste this in here, and I can minus that two and five eighths. There we go. Make sure I click height planes one and two, uniform stretch planes in between. There we go. We're stretching just in the middle of this cabinet door. The last part about this, and this is, again, this is a quick video. We're only at about maybe eight minutes before we're done, is that I need to set a Y offset. I need to go ahead and grab the overall depth of this symbol, copy it, and then I'm going to set a Y offset that's based on the depth of my cabinet. So my cabinet's going to be 21 inches in this case, and this is why you have to do this for each unique cabinet depth that you're creating, because this is the only way this works. Okay, so I'm gonna do 21 plus the depth of my cabinet door, press okay. This is now in my library. I can hover over, click and replace. And you know, because these doors are kind of buried in the ceiling, you might have to kind of get here in here in 3D. My door is right here. So it's finally giving me this mouse cursor option to replace. You can see when I'm hovering over the correct area. There we go. And what happened? Well, my cabinet's not 21 inch is deep yet. So let's go ahead and do that. And here we go. Now this cabinet's all set up. Look at that. It just dives into the pocket. Let me make this 42 wide, which would be appropriate for a two sided 21 inch door at a 21 inch deep pocket. So when I open this up, Look at that, it just buries into the pockets, looks very cool. The last part of that, this is I have a backsplash here. I can just copy, paste it in place and just paste it centered on this and just kind of conform it to the back of this cabinet if I really need to show the back of the cabinet, right? That's the total possibility, that's fine, this will work. The last part about this is in case you wanna have some spacing in between these doors when they're shut, right? We can always come in here, get to that backside face again, we can split this door, right? That's going to create a separation, if you will. And let's go ahead and change this to just, we can make it an opening. And maybe we want to just have like a quarter inch reveal in between the two. We can choose the layout horizontal, click equalize, and then make sure that one of these, it's this side, is going to be that door left in this case so that it pockets correctly. There we go. Now we have a little gap in between the door. Very cool. Let's open it up one more time. Look at that. It's a beautiful cabinet. All done. Let me know if you have any questions. Cheers.